So what's gonna happen is I'm gonna go ahead and read you like the comments as people are commenting. So it'll be super fun and you'll see everything that's happening. Um, so, all right, you guys, I want to go ahead and welcome Michelle with us live here um, tonight. Thank you so much, Michelle, for joining. So let me see who's here with us live, Michelle. I wanna see who's here. Um, I don't see any comments yet. Sometimes there's a delay on Facebook, um, but Michelle just finished teaching a class. Oh my gosh. So Michelle, thank you so much for joining. I actually, um, right before our call, I made this mojito recipe oh, that Jen shared with us, a skinny good. mojito. Um, yeah, and it's actually it's a non-alcoholic version. Maybe I'll make a alcoholic version one later. We'll see. <laughs> After, just like add a splash. <laughs> exactly. I know. Food freedom, right? So I'm super right. you know, big on these. I do see some people live. So comment with us, guys, if you're live. Um, comment in the chat. Say hey to Michelle, those of you who know her and those of you who don't know her yet. Get super excited. So you're about to meet this amazing woman who I'm so grateful to have tonight. Thank you. That just wrapped up my six week Create My Weight program. And I was super excited to have Michelle on, number one, because of just of her success and just how much of a pleasure she's been to work with. And you'll just see her energy is just contagious. And so I really hope she inspires a lot of you guys. But also, number two, a lot of people don't know that I do have a six week program which is really kind of an introduction to food freedom and really learning nutrition and optimizing your fitness regimen. And so we're going to learn a little bit about that tonight and Michelle's experience in the program. So Michelle, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, and so what I want to kind of start off with Michelle is, you know, what made you reach out for help? You know, what made you start to kind of um, decide to go on this journey? What were the starting factors for you? Well, that's, that's easy. So I have a friend who um, not only did your challenge before, but has worked with you. And so for me, seeing all her results on Facebook, and I was just curious, because I've known this beautiful friend, and I've known kind of her journey, and then watching her, I, I loved watching her the first time, like there was two of the um, challenges that she did. And the first one, like, that's so awesome, but I was doing my thing and whatever, and I just wasn't there. Second time she came around, I went, what? Look at her. Look at how different she looks. And I know she'd been working on it, but like, here we are a couple, like three or four months later, and she's just fantastically in shape. And I'm going, all right. My brain started paying attention. And right around that time, you had offered the, right before the holidays, a challenge to dive into. And I'm like, timing's great. Let me do this. This is exciting. I'm curious because I love my friend, Danita, so much. And she's had such amazing results that I want to see what this is about. So I go in with like any time else with my skepticism and just my awareness being on going, let me see what all this is about. Because there's a lot of programs out there that aren't always in the best interest of those who are participating. And there's a lot that are, but there's so much information it can oftentimes be overwhelming. So for me, it was already a no brainer because I had a friend who was doing it and I watched her journey and she's tagged you in so many things. And I was just so curious about who you were as a person. And as mm -hmm. I dove in, I'm like, wow, this is really cool. There's a lot to be offered in these free or these challenges. They weren't free at the time, but <laughs> the challenges to dive into. And I was in the mood to really find a new way to move my body. But then I didn't even know what the whole challenge was. Danita was in, I'm in, let's do this together. That's fine, was kind of how I did that. But then you start talking about food freedom. And I got so curious because I'm looking for movement freedom. And in this two, 21 day challenge, I started to refine my mojo, my movement mojo. I'm not a stranger to working out. I'm not a stranger to eating right. I'm not a stranger to all of those things, but I'm human and life sometimes takes over. And I just had found myself going, all right, I see maybe 10 pounds on me, but I noticed like where I used to have muscle, <laughs> I didn't have muscle anymore. And I wanted to do something to switch that, but I didn't want to do the same things I'd always done, like really hard weights, big workouts. I just had been in this mo movement of wanting to be nicer to myself. So in this program, we focused on eating things that were a good substitution, and it opened up its own freedom and curiosity with me. The movement was easy to commit to, and I started to really find myself having fun. So that led me to working with you because I thought, you know, I love the idea of one-on-one -on -one coaching because it keeps me accountable. Mm. And 
I'm open to the experience. I'm a, I'm a life coach myself. So I'm open to the experience that working with someone else can mirror to you some of the things that you don't see in your own self. And so I was ready to put an end to these little pieces of my past that kept me from having the food freedom. And I know we had like message back and forth throughout the challenge. And I was, you're like, we, we talk about that later. We talk about that later. Just be with it right now. And that's when I realized I really want to dive in because I want to experience um, all that you were providing and the information you were saying and just really dive in deeper to understand more about myself and where I can make those shifts without judgment. So, shifts without judgment. Um, comment in the chat, hashtag shifts without judgment, like letting go of expectations, letting go of what we think is right and what we think is wrong and just being open to exploring and trying new things. And I think that Michelle is also why you were so successful at Create My Weight is because you had that mentality going in, you know, and we had a challenge was a great introduction to, you know, Create My Weight and Food Freedom. And then like you were ready to go to the next level. Um, and so I also want to kind of bring up here, like you were saying, like you are a life coach and, you know, you also came in to create my weight with lots of experiences in your past. Like you had learned nutrition in the past, like you are no novice to working out. So tell me like a little, tell us actually a little bit about your past experiences. Cause I think some of the people watching will maybe resonate more with you if they understand your past and how that led you to where you are now and why you were ready for food freedom. Okay. Yeah, um, not telling my whole history, but as a child, <laughs> I loved dancing. And so that became a path I followed through college was uh, becoming a dancer, a teacher of dance, having a degree in dance. Guess what happens when you're in dance? You get to compare yourself and then pretty soon you're judging yourself on how thin you are or what you don't look like and you're not getting the job because of these things. Little did I know that that was going to play into well, already was playing into some of the things that were patterning in my life, but would still continue to play in later. So then having a couple kids, being afraid of gaining weight while you're anybody when you're pregnant, oh my gosh, I'm going to have this baby, but now I'm going to gain weight and there's no going back from that. You're going to do what it takes for that child to be healthy. That was my first insight into I can do better, right? Mm -hmm. I don't have to be afraid of this. And so as the kids grew, um, my husband and I always loved working out. So that wasn't really a problem. We just kind of had that into our habits, but I got to experience life differently. I got to be home with the kids for a little while. I got to understand that I want them to eat good foods. And then I realized I didn't cook. I didn't, I didn't know how to do that. Right. It was so easy to grab convenience. And so that became a process in learning for myself. And at the time I had discovered paleo and CrossFit because that was a very big movement back then. And so my mind was blown with the shifts and changes that can happen because I was again, ready for a change after my second baby. And I was still from my age, young enough to put my body through those things um, that I saw result, but that didn't always feel sustainable because there was a lot of can'ts on the list, mm -hmm. right? And so that worked for about 10 years until it didn't, until my body shifted, until my body didn't respond to that anymore. And it allowed me the opportunity, it didn't feel like it at the time, by the way, because my hormones shifted and, it, and we went through a lot of stress in life and I started gaining weight for no reason again. And I couldn't understand what was happening because in my mind, I was doing all the right things, right? Have you guys been there before? The workouts, I worked harder, I did more, but that was just having a reverse effect. And it's because the stress had took a toll on my body. And so I had the opportunity at that moment of time, it's kind of synchronistic to uh, start and do something completely different for myself. So I studied to become a strength and conditioning coach. And I was working based off the philosophy of being functional in movement and honoring our nutrition, but it was still very paleo based at the time. So it was a very um, not strict box, that box that had been opened a little bit more, but it was just still the one way kind of thinking, right? And maybe we were introducing keto at the time and maybe these new things were arising, but this is definitely how you move and this is how everything works. And I fell into that philosophy and it's not that I don't believe in it anymore. It's just that I kept getting older. I'm 52. So even in my forties, things were changing and my body would respond differently and things were hurting in a way it didn't feel good anymore, but I was so set on doing things the way I knew them. I wasn't open to receiving new information. And so 
fast forward to this journey, I, I explored yoga, I explored walking, I explored all the things that felt good to me. And then I found a very beautiful, amazing detox plan that was very much based on eating whole foods and lots of veggies and very little fat, but the way it was put together was very restrictive. And even my mind was like, I can do this. I'll do anything you tell me to do because I'll make that shift. I'm dedicated, right? Yeah. Um, right? But the thought of going through that again, I was very successful. I lost 20 pounds and I kept that off within seven to 10 pounds. We, we also didn't work out during that time. And we also didn't put stress on the body in any form to allow our body to heal. I get that. But when you got back into real living, those other little things kept creeping in, but it was more so feeling bad about the foods you thought you weren't supposed to have. And then that whole confusion continues to happen, right? Like we just swirl on this. So when I met you, I was like, I'm, I'm, I get interested. I get geeked out about the brain and how it works and how it works with our body. And I was ready to just let go of this next phase. I had been doing some more inner growth. And I was like, I wonder what it is keeping me from thinking that I can't have the results that I want. And so it was a perfect synergy of timing. And I was so open to hearing everything you had to say as if it was fresh and new, that I didn't have all these other preconceived notions. But what I felt in my heart was if I was to take my strength and conditioning, which I don't do now, because I got really excited about the mindset part and I took off on that pathway. Yeah. Um, but if I had put together that how would it have looked? And I'm experiencing it in your program, not to say what I didn't do, but just so excited that you got it. Like there was this, this energetic component in what you teach that my body was like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. Let me see how I can be with childlike eyes and see what results I can get for myself. And so that's kind of how I got to where I was and with you and then totally blowing that apart with, oh, you don't know anything. <laughs> Right, like there was so much I didn't know because I was so closed off from what I thought I believed I could eat. And the beliefs in that was so powerful because I still was operating off of this is good food, this is bad food. Mm -hmm. AKA, you're a good girl if you eat this food, and you're a bad girl if you eat this food. And that, you guys, that lives in your body and holds all those results away from where you want to go. It's yeah. profound. Yeah. You guys and, comment. Sorry, Michelle, go ahead. No, go ahead. I was just going to say, and just like, we can talk about that because I think that with you being honest and where I was and us being able to dive in and knowing like, look, let me feel into six weeks with this because I know I can take it and run from it if I can understand what's going on. And there were times I'm like, I don't want to do it. I don't know how much, I don't want to, I don't want to, I want to do what you're telling me to do. And I got to feel into that. And the beauty that's on the other side of it was the magic. So I'm going to let you. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Course. So Michelle just dropped so many gold, so many gold bombs. I call it on us, you guys. Okay. So I want you to comment in the chat. If anything she said regarding, like she did things for years and it stopped working. Okay. Stress came into her life and she started gaining weight. I want you to comment. That's me. I want you to comment what it is you connected with Michelle because she just gave you like all her life struggles with weight loss in like a two minute little speech here, right? And so there are so many things you guys can connect with. And first of all, 52 years old, look at her. Like when you told me your age, I was like, there's no freaking way. Oh my gosh, amazing. Um, but what I really loved about what Michelle was saying that she was categorizing food as good and bad, right? Um, I want you to comment in the chat, like that's me, you know? And there's so many people that, have that belief because they've done so many restricted diets in the past. And yes, like maybe they worked in the past, but again, like you said, it's not sustainable. Um, and there really is, you know, life beyond that. Well, there was an energy of punishment with it. And we've had these conversations and I, yeah. and what I didn't share the long story, we didn't go far in the fact was, no. um, in my, when I was 12 and 13, I, I was really in that, um, shame spiral in my body. And it wasn't because of dance. It was because I was a teenager in front of a mirror, making meaning out of things of why I was different than the next dancer. Right. And I wanted to be a dancer so bad, but I could see the difference in my body. And what I fell prey to was the anorexia and the bulimia, the eating disorders that followed. And, you know, it's just the journey. So the good and bad comes from that trauma experience way back then, but it still plays out no matter how much you heal, there's, there's elements that are always still there to, to 
be healed, be going through and seeing yourself differently. And that, that's kind of like the whole thing is I realized even though that happened, it doesn't mean that that can't still be released, right? right. These are just new areas coming up. And so I was really specific in talking with you about this is what I want to find. I want to be able to, to be free. The serious words in food freedom resonated down to the core because I had never allowed myself to experience that. It was always, you're not allowed to do this. And that started back then because you right. won't be this if you do those things. That's where the good and bad play in. So maybe that yeah. gives more insight into the, maybe that's you too. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I'm so glad you brought that up, Michelle, because our relationship with food definitely does start in our childhood. You know, for you it was because you were a dancer and I'm sure there were restrictions or like you mentioned oh, yeah. comparison. Games. I was also a heavier child. <laughs> Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. And actually, you know, I, I think I've mentioned this in some of the workshops I've done, you know, where when I was a kid, like I always wanted skinny legs. You know, I remember one time my stepdad commented, I had thunder thighs and that always resonated with me I, and not in a good way. And that's actually what got me into running as a teenager was because I wanted skinny legs, like all my friends. And so that's what got me into this like obsessive nature of exercise that I had to kind of work through. Um, so a lot of these thoughts about our body, about food, about exercise start when we we're a kid. And oftentimes we feel trapped in that mindset. And right. as, as adults, we have to not just acknowledge our past, you know, we have to move forward from it. How can we re recreate our relationship with food and with mm -hmm. exercise to have this healthy, balanced, realistic lifestyle, you know, right. and right. it's so important to dig. Absolutely. Oh, so good. That and that punishment piece, I didn't realize I was still operating from that and thinking it was something else because it's all I'd known, right? Like yeah. just do this more and you'll be good. And so when I switched it to how can I love myself more and what does that look like in the foods I choose and what does that look like in what I allow myself, like that energetic synergy just like resulted in literally results sometimes it wasn't always what I was doing it was just who I was allowing myself to be that released a lot of that does that make sense absolutely and I love how you bring this up because oftentimes when people are on the weight loss journey or trying to change their body they're always thinking like more 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 like what else can I do right like more workouts you know more healthy foods and they don't really take a look at the big picture and think what can I do less of or how can I like love myself more, but like have less expectations and like less punishment, less guilt, less fear. Right. And so actually I was looking back at like last year and I had called 2020 the year of less, like less fear, less judgment, um, less doubt, yeah. um, doing less and just appreciating more. I haven't labeled 2021 yet. It's just been too busy, but, um, I'm really glad you brought this up because that's what food freedom is about. Um, it's about learning how to eat all of these things and having less fear, you know, and, and I actually want to bring this up for you, Michelle, because I remember on our very first call, you know, you told me that your body doesn't process fats well, right? Like certain kinds of fats, but I know you were so afraid of having carbs because carbs were like bad. Remember? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. As carbs were the reason all of the weight comes on because it didn't fall into the little box, right? Exactly, exactly, yeah. And tell us like how you feel about carbs now. Well, I'd love, and I love this question because it's a work in progress. Yeah, <laughs> it always cool is. Honest. Like it's not like, ha, 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 everything's better, but it's also not like, oh gosh, everything's falling apart. Like what I've learned was because there were so many more opportunities to find substitutions for things. There became more possibility to create different things and to allow myself to play. You can't possibly eat all those things in one day. So I got to be really mindful and what did I want in the pantry and what did I want in the refrigerator and how would that look on certain days? And oh my gosh, today's a workout day and I can do this. And oh my gosh, this is a non-workout day and I can enjoy this. And it just became fun. So it felt a little scattered in the beginning and then it just became fun. And in that decision to have fun, there is a, I don't know how many numbers 
uh, hundreds of thousands of recipe combinations, like maybe more than that, um, and resources and things that you provide that I haven't even got to dive into yet. I'm still just having fun off of the top five that changed my world. Like even in yesterday, let me let me tell you this because this is how it comes down. Like I'm like, oh, I find myself going, oh, that was a bad day. You had too many carbs, and then I look at it. I'm like, what did you eat that you think you had too many carbs? I have, um, I'm gonna just, my favorite are the shira, shirataki noodles. Yeah. And so they can become so savory and delicious when you get to figure out how that works for you, what, what flavors meld, right? And there can produce this like guilt feeling of, oh, I did something wrong, which is just old. Yeah. And then you realize, no, I didn't not only do anything wrong, I did things so great for my body that I can just celebrate that. And that's where that shift happens where it just, dies away. It doesn't right. have to live where it used to just want to beat me up. And it was funny because in the group, somebody posted something about ice cream. So this week I bought ice cream <laughs> and I've been enjoying my ice cream. And that's where I just get a kick out of it. Like the brain's like, oh, you're not supposed to have. And you're like, I'm having it and it's fine and it's great. And there's nothing wrong. And you lose more weight and you, you drop a few inches and you didn't even expect to. And it's because it's freedom. You don't have right. to stress over every single thing in your body that you're putting through in through your mouth right like mm -hmm. it can taste sweet but it doesn't mean it's wrong right there's ways to find that it can be crunchy and it doesn't mean it's chips like it's it's just fascinating so the answer to that question is it became fun and i started to decide where i can play more and how i can create different meals and how that felt to eat those and how celebrated i can be in myself for having that freedom and that started to become the new habit and it's the one that i fall back on every single day now you know the understanding of it helps you to have the freedom in exploring it more yes that's the key you guys understanding